Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Feinstein, back here in the archives of the Great American Songbook Foundation. Happy to speak to you about a composer and songwriter who is very important to the history of American musical theater and American popular song of the 20th century and beyond, and his name is Jerry Herman. I think it's safe to say that almost everybody on the planet has heard or whistled, sung, or hummed a song by Jerry Herman. And his music has been recorded and covered by everybody you can imagine, including um, a lot of pop groups, uh, for example, the Beatles. It was one of the hallmarks of Jerry Herman's delight that the Beatles had even uh, recorded uh, one of his songs uh, when they were at their peak. Jerry was a fascinating composer and lyricist because he conceived both music and lyrics simultaneously. And he was never a trained musician, but it came to him naturally. And it was clear that he was always going to be involved somehow in songwriting and later musical theater. He studied design at the University of uh, Miami, but then started doing college shows. And it was clear that that was where his uh, career was heading. And he was lucky to have a family that supported that in a way that, that gave him the courage to continue on. And so we have some interesting things in our Jerry Herman collection. And I'm going to start with the, the vanity piece here, which is an album that I recorded with the composer at the piano. A number of years ago, I did a series of recordings memorializing the way songwriters played their own songs, because having had the opportunity to hear them at parties and other events, I was always fascinated to hear how the original creation or original conception sounded versus what went out into the world. And Jerry Herman, like many of his uh, contemporaries, was a very talented and unique pianist. So when I asked him if he would record an album with me, of his songs, uh, him at the piano, he immediately said yes, and we had a wonderful time recording many of his standards, including Hello Dolly, It Only Takes a Moment Before the Parade Passes By, songs from MAME, including We Need a Little Christmas, and uh, uh, also songs from a show that uh, was not successful on Broadway in 1974 called Mac and Mabel, which was Jerry's favorite score. That was a show that has been revived a number of times, but has never found its place in the, I'd say, the standard repertory of musical theater. The show that is probably his most produced is Hello, Dolly. And this is the British cast recording. On Broadway, Hello, Dolly, in 1964, originally starred Carol Channing. And then when she left the show, she was replaced by five or six other Dollies during its Broadway run including a version with Pearl Bailey featuring an all-black cast and a new cast recording featuring Pearl and Cab Calloway. But this is the British cast recording featuring Mary Martin. And Mary Martin also went to Japan and performed Hello, Dolly! over there, even though I don't know if there is a Japanese cast recording of Hello, Dolly! but I would bet that there is, because many of these uh, musical theater uh, shows that are American standards are also standards all over the world. This is another CD that uh, is called An Evening with Jerry Herman, recorded live at the Rainbow and Stars Club in Rockefeller Center, probably uh, in the 90s, or was it the 80s? I, uh, 1989. And uh, again features Jerry at the piano with two of his favorite singers, Leroy Reams and Karen Morrow. This material here, this is working material from the original production from 1974 of Mac and Mabel, which also featured Jerry's favorite song, I Won't Send Roses, which I've recorded with Jerry at the piano and also orchestrally, and it is one of my most requested numbers. And it's so interesting to look at production parts from a show in its, in its original form, because you'll always find things crossed out, where they've made changes in the action or in the script, or they've cut a song. And this has a paste-over of what would have been the first eight bars of this particular number, which is not even identified. Oh, it says Hit Head. It was a number called Hit Him on the Head, which was sung by one of the stars of the musical, Robert Preston. The reference to Don was to Don Pippen, who was the conductor of the show. This part says sax time. I have no idea what that is, and there are a number of things in here that appear to me to be songs that were cut from the show, and I'll have to go through them and see. Uh, and this says skip. That says skip. And I don't know if it means skip the number or if it's referring to one of the musicians involved with the show, Skip Redwine. 
those are the sort of questions that come up when we look at something like this. This is the curtain raiser, which was probably the, the top of the second act. And so all of these things help to tell the story that if anyone ever wants to recreate the original version of Mac and Mabel, this is resource material that will help us to discover that. And I'm sure that Jerry would be very, very happy to see Mac and Mabel revived in the way that he intended it to be. These days, we see many revivals of Hello, Dolly. We see revivals of Maine. Mame, I said Maine. Uh, that's not quite as popular as Oklahoma. Uh, and we see uh, many revivals of La Cage aux Folles, his last major Broadway musical. And so uh, we hope that um, all of you will come and visit us someday here at the archive and come to see our collections, which are on public display, to help celebrate the legacy of Jerry Herman and beyond. Please join us again here in the archives. Thank you.